two million years ago, ancestors of modern humans had begun to spread out of Africa. But the earth around them was cooling down. Before long, much of the planet would be coated in huge glaciers. The ice ages had arrived. The grand freezings were triggered when overflowing volcanoes in Panama created the land bridge joining North to South America and radically altered global ocean currents. The polar seas cooled significantly. The result was that pronounced dips in global temperature could now tip the planet into ice ages lasting tens of thousands of years. Iceland, the Lok Yukul Glacier. In the highest, coldest parts of the planet, glaciers still reign supreme. Few venture out in these hostile terrains, but glacier climatologist Finner Paulsen and his team regularly battle the freezing elements. When you're doing glacier fieldwork, conditions can be very bad. Outside, it is below minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. They like to work in harsh conditions. Difficulty is something you need to tackle. Finner is keeping tabs on the growth of the glacier. At present, it is over 350 square miles, the size of New York City. And although it may look static, in fact, it is in constant motion. Glaciers are formed initially by snowfall on high areas. The compacted ice is then dragged down by the force of gravity. The glaciers move like slow motion rivers. You can think of ice as soft material like toothpaste. It flows. If you would make a big block of toothpaste on a plate, it would slowly sink down and flow away to the edges. Finner and his team in Iceland regularly check on the incremental movement of the ice. This is a satellite positioning system. We can calculate the, the position of this point with an accuracy of about two centimeters to calculate how fast the glacier moves. Finner's measurements tell him that this glacier is moving at over 150 feet per year. In today's mild temperatures, glacial advance is kept in check by glacial melting. But if global temperatures were to drop by just a few degrees for a long period, then the glaciers would grind slowly forward and the Earth would enter another ice age. The existence of ice ages was first discovered by 19th century Swiss geologist Louis Agassiz. As he explored the Swiss Alps in the 1830s, Agassiz couldn't help but notice the immense boulders scattered over farmland and the bizarre towers of gravel capped by stones that stood guard over some of the mountain valleys. To explain how the rocks arrived at these positions, he speculated that they had been carried and deposited by ancient glaciers that had once filled the alpine valleys and covered the northern hemisphere. Initially ridiculed by his peers, Agassiz's Ice Age theory became accepted as telltale signs that these huge glaciers had indeed covered the continents were found all over the globe. The evidence is everywhere. New York Central Park. This oasis of green in the middle of Manhattan exposes part of the island's ancient bedrock. Many large outcrops are visible, and they contain the footprints of the glaciers. Climate expert Jörg Schaefer is looking for subtle traces of this frozen world. It's actually something I bet that most New Yorkers do not know. You see the ice ages everywhere if you open your eyes. Look closely 
and the super hard bedrock is marked with scores of tiny parallel lines, fractions of an inch deep. So this point here is actually one of the most amazing spots of evidence for an ice age in the middle of New York City. The grooves were caused by small rocks caught under the massive weight of a moving glacier. These little rocks basically cut like a knife into this very hot bedrock. This is clear proof that once an enormous ice sheet was moving in this direction in the middle of New York City. The glaciers that hit New York were massive. They rolled down from the Arctic and buried Manhattan under a huge depth of ice. To give you an idea about the thickness of the Laurentide ice sheet in the Manhattan area, it was at least twice as thick as the Empire State Building's height today. Over the last two million years, as the climate fluctuated, the huge ice sheets waxed and waned. Every pass, they gouged and crushed and reshaped the land beneath them. As the last glaciers retreated 10,000 years ago, they left behind a bruised and battered landscape and created features we still see today. In the USA, Cape Cod and Long Island are built on immense piles of boulders dropped from the retreating edge of the North American ice sheet and the great weight of the ice formed huge depressions that now make up the Great Lakes. In the warmer climate that followed the last glacial retreat, early humans had free reign over the surface. In this brief period, a fraction of a fraction of 1% of the history of the Earth, the entire history of human civilization has taken place. Human ingenuity has reshaped our planet. From our perspective, our achievements are breathtaking. But will we continue to survive and prosper? Humans have, with technology, dominated the planet more completely than perhaps than any other animal in the history of, of life. But we've done it for such a short period of time that we've got a long ways to go. Over the past 4.5 billion years, the Earth has been on the most incredible journey. Over the eons of its existence, the planetary environment has undergone immense transformations. And since the arrival of life, these transformations have in many ways determined which organisms will survive and which will be swept aside.